limits of trigonometric functions. Theorem 3. Let f and g be two real valued functions with the same domain such that fx is less than equal to g x for all x in the domain of definition. Then for some a, if both the limit exist, then limit x tends to a. fx is less than equal to limit x tend to a gx. Theorem 4 also known as the sandwich theorem. Let f, g and h be real functions such that fx is less than equal to gx is less than equal to hx for all x in the common domain of definition. Then for some real number a if limit x tending to a fx equals i which equals limit x tending to a gx then limit x tending to a hx equals to i. Come now let's see the geometric proof of the following important inequality relating trigonometric functions. Cos x is less than sin x divided by x is less than 1 for mod x greater than 0 and less than pi by 2. Proof We know that sin of minus x equals to minus sin x and cos of minus x equals to cos x. Hence, it is sufficient to prove the inequality for x greater than 0 and less than pi by 2. From the figure, we can clearly understand that area of triangle OAC is less than area of sector OAC is less than area of triangle OAB. Now, writing it in mathematical form and cancelling out the common terms we get the relation CD is less than X into OA is less than AB. Now, from triangle OCD, sin X equals to CD by OA. Since OC equals to OA. Again, tan X equals AB by OA. Thus, OA sin X is less than OA into X which is less than OA tan X. Now, as the length OA is positive, we have sin X is less than X, which is less than tan X. Since X lies between O and pi by 2, sin X is positive and thus by dividing throughout by sin X and taking reciprocals throughout, we have cos X less than sin X by X, which is less than 1. This completes the proof. Theorem 5 The following are the two important limits. Come, let's learn their proofs. The inequality cos x is less than sin x divided by x is less than 1 for mod x greater than 0 and less than pi by 2 says that the function sin x divided by x is sandwiched between function cos x and the constant function which takes value 1. Further, since limit x tends to 0, cos x equals to 1. We see that proof of the first theorem is complete by sandwich theorem. To prove number 2, we call the trigonometric identity 1 minus cos x equals 2 sin square x by 2. Now replacing 1 minus cos x with this identity. Writing sin square x by 2 as sin square x by 2 into sin square x by 2. Dividing numerator and denominator by 2. And then finally evaluating the limit we get the answer equal to 0. Observe that we have implicitly used the fact that x tending to 0 is equivalent to x by 2 tending to 0. This may be justified by putting y equals x by 2. Let's take an example. 
we have to evaluate the following limits. Solution Number 1. On dividing the numerator by 4x and the denominator by 2x multiplied by 2, the equation reduces to a familiar form. Hence, we can evaluate the limit easily. So, the answer comes out to be equal to 2. Number 2. Writing 10x as sin x divided by cos x and rearranging the terms, it reduces to a known form which can be evaluated easily and hence finally we can get the result as 1. Come, let's learn a general rule that needs to be kept in mind while evaluating limits is the following. Say, given that limit x tending to a, fx divided by gx exists and we want to evaluate this. First, we check the value of fa and ga. If both are 0, then we see if we can get the factor which is causing the terms to vanish, that is, c. If we can write fx equals to f1 x into f2 x so that f1a equals to 0 and f2a not equals to 0. Similarly, we can write gx equals to g1x into g2x where g1a equals to 0 and g2a not equals to 0. Cancel out the common factors from fx and gx if possible and write fx divided by gx equals to px divided by qx where qx is not equal to 0. Then limit x tending to a fx divided by gx equals to p of a divided by q of a.